All right, what's up guys? So, just pulling out what I carried today out of my pockets. Some stuff doesn't really change much. Uh, what else do I have? Yes, Matt, I do carry one from time to time. So, checking in on the comments real quick. Okay, no new comments. All right, so anyways, hopefully everyone is having a good week. It is going to be a very long week for me. I have a final on Saturday, and I'm definitely not ready for it. And I've got about 10 chapters to catch up on reading, so that is going to be fun. Yes, Mark, I still have a fidget spinner. All right, so before before I get dogpiled, um, so a lot of my a lot of my time at work is spent on the phone with clients, and so if I'm on a thirty minute phone call, I mean it's all I can do to not like tap my fingers or get distracted like playing a game on my phone or you know if I'm in class for four hours on Wednesday night or I'm in class for eight hours on Saturday then. Yeah, keeps me sane. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yep. Rest in peace, Toys R Us. That was kind of a it's kind of a sad thing for those of us who were around in the '90s when you know Toys R Us was the hopes and dreams of a Saturday trip. Um, but anyway, so I've got a lot of crap going on this week with a final on Saturday, and um, I should probably also address the band aid you're going to see throughout this video. I don't know if you guys, and you can see a bunch of scratching here and here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those retractable dog leashes that had, it's like a thin nylon strip and, you know, it can go like 25, 30 feet. My dog is about 70 pounds and he decided to take off after two 100 pound dogs while I was cleaning up some dog poo. And the first thing I did is I tried to lock it and then I reached over and I grabbed the nylon strip and it just ripped my hand apart. Underneath this, I'm missing like an entire layer of skin right on the joint. So it hurts like a mother still. My hand was like all swollen. So anyways, I didn't cut myself with a knife, which is the first thing that some of you are going to ask. Um, yeah, so anyways. Oh, final what class? So I'm working on what's called my, it's a certified financial planner designation. It's a year-long course. You have to have a bachelor's degree and you have to have three years experience in, in the industry. And so that's going to, um, I won't even test till July. So I'm, I'll be really excited when that is finally over and done with and I can have a lot of my life back. But uh, so Ricky's saying I should get my dog a training collar. Uh, he's usually good, but I don't know. It's just one of those things. So. Yeah, it, it, it friggin' hurt though. All right, what else do we have going on? So, I actually don't have a lot of new stuff this week, which I guess is kind of good, right? Um, so here's what I carry today. Still have the um, Das Ophinimir, uh, what is this, the Hobay? Crap, the Hobay wallet. So I still really, really like this one. Love the color combo. It, as dumb as it sounds, it matches everything, so. Makes it nice. Uh, this is the 4.7's Prion P1 in copper. Uh, Hinder, what is this? Uh, it's, is it the Investigator? I don't even remember. It's one of the Hinder models, but um, my buddy who does animal work, dude, come on, focus, holy cow. Um, he gave me some O-rings to put on it. It's, you know, and so that makes writing a lot nicer, which is cool. So, anyways, it, it's a decent little pen. It's it's fairly small, and the pocket clip can be difficult to navigate with jeans sometimes. But um, it's a nice pen. I uh, carried my, you know, this is a Bladies Q exclusive. Ta-da! Um, this is the large carbon fiber Sebenza Twenty One. And finally, after months and months of waiting, a uh, millet finally made some more of the carbon fiber inlay clips, and it looks fantastic. So. Um, that is a very, very nice upgrade aesthetically. Um, it just it just seems to match the knife better. So anyways, that's what I carried today. 
And then, yep, the fidget spinner, we've talked about that. And then here's my Steinhardt, what is this, the Triton 30. This thing is a freaking beast, but it's what I had on today. So that is what I carried. Uh, can I roll my Roth into a knife investment without being taxed? No, no, you can definitely not. That is a, uh, yeah, can't do that. Um, so the best financial advice I can give you is don't get into knives, put all that money into retirement accounts. And um, yeah, that's, that's the best advice I can give you. All right. Uh, yeah, financial suggestions, stay away from EDC stuff, absolutely. Uh, Tim asked if this is the Hobay or the Top Cider. This specific one is the Hobay because, uh, okay, good, there's no numbers showing. Uh, this has the extra slots in between, which I prefer. I like more card slots. Um, just helps me to separate out like my most used cards from my less used cards from like the cash in the back. So yeah, this is, um, it's really nice. Let me move my debit card. Scratch the crap out of this thing. I don't know what, it looks like I cut it with a knife, but um, pretty deep, but mostly superficial. All right, let's see. Uh, okay. So Blade Show. Um, I'm not sure on Blade Show right now. It's, it's going to be a busy year. I'm testing in July for that, you know, that thing I just told you guys about. And I have a live review in June. Plus, my wife has a couple of bodybuilding shows she wants to go to. So I just, I don't know if Blade's going to happen right now. It's, I'm probably leaning towards no, unfortunately. But if it does work out, then I will be ecstatic. Let me adjust this. All right. Um, we'll see, though. Okay. Ryan asks, CT609 or 450? Uh, Ryan, I like the ergonomics on the 609 better. Um, personally, having handled both, so that's my opinion. And let's see, what do I think about the Spyderco Manix 2? Blade Lover asks. I mean, it's a great knife. Um, you know, like most of the Spydercos, you honestly can't go wrong. Um, especially in like the sub-150 range, so. Um... So Koala Pear asked how the functionality on this clip is compared to the original. So as with all things, by and large, spring clips, ugh, spring clips are more functional than mill titanium clips just because they have so much more flex. Um, and as you guys can see, the lip on this thing versus the lip on this one, obviously we have some differences there. So I'm going to see you're going to give up a little bit of functionality for this clip versus a standard spring clip, but... You know, I'm I'm happy. You know, I happily gave that up. Um, at 80 bucks, these aren't you know these aren't priced bad either. Um, another cool tidbit is they use the same carbon fiber that Chris Reeve uses, so it's the exact same material, which is you know kind of a cool little thing. Uh, there's that there's that backspacer, the uh, lanyard pin that I got from MXG Gear. Um, you know, seems to work well. Doesn't seem to throw off the tolerances, but anyways. So yeah, that's my spends of 21. All right, let me take a look at the comments. So Chandler asks what I think about the Spyderco. What is that, the Hanan? Um, looks cool. I've been disappointed by their, by their compression lock flippers so far. I'm pretty sure that one is a compression lock. So anyways, what's up, Greg? Um, yeah, guys, I, I really hope I can make it to Blade. Um, I really... Yeah. So I go to Blade in the USN show, and Blade show is better for production stuff, which is really what I like to focus on. You know, customs are fine and dandy, but by and large, um, you know, it's just, it's harder for you guys to buy them. They're a lot more expensive. It doesn't really make a lot of sense from a, you know, a channel standpoint to really do a lot with custom knives, although I do have some. So Blade is really kind of a better show for the content that, that I make and the content that you guys watch. So I don't know. Fingers crossed. We'll see. I... I really need, to, I really need to liquidate some knives. I need a you know decrease by a good number. But every time I go through my knife box, like there's nothing that I want to sell. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I free up a bunch of cash, then I'll go to Blade. I don't know. It's it's just kind of up in the air right now. There's a lot going on around that time of the year. But I'll definitely be bummed if I don't make it. So we'll see. Okay. Um. So Alex. Alex said he just got his millet clip and it's hard to get in the jean pockets. I think it'll break in a little bit. I don't have too much trouble. 
Um, but anyways, I like it. I like it. Uh, Spyderco Gale Bradley 2 for EDC. Eric asks, absolutely. Um, and Spyderco Gale Bradley 1, if you can find one of those, I love that knife. I should really pick another one up, but as I just said, I need to sell some stuff, so. Okay. Uh, sh uh, 50 fathoms, maybe. Look at this thing, this thing's like 14 millimeters tall. This thing is just, this is at the largest end of what I will wear, absolutely. All right, so let's take a look at some of the new stuff. So again, that pocket clip was new. Uh, let me move this crap out of the way. I got another pocket clip, because I guess this was the week of pocket clips, but I upgraded the 0392, which was not inexpensive either. This is a $45 pocket clip, but um, it just, I think it looks a lot better with the knife. Um, I'll upgrade the, I will upgrade the filler tab to a blue one once I find one. And then the pivot, you can, you can put in a hinder pivot screw. The problem is the head of the screw is like, I don't know, it's it's taller than the handle of the knife, so that is going to protrude, and I just don't know how I feel about that. So, that'll be coming eventually. And then the other new thing, I guess, is probably this, which is the Seiko Alpinist. Um, they just discontinued these not too long ago, and so uh, prices started jumping by like a hundred bucks. It's on a Stratco Jubilee that uses solid end links. So it's a um, very cool piece. Um, you know, I definitely get the cult following. It really is all about that dial. So, and then the performance standpoint too. But here, here's the two at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Check this out. 38.9 or 39 millimeters, and this is 44 millimeters. It's like 14 millimeters thick. This one, I don't know, probably 11 or 12 maybe. But anyways, opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, all right, let's take a look. Alpha Leader says he doesn't like this CT. Dude, this CT is phenomenal. Um, this is as good as like the ZT560. I would highly recommend this knife. Um, I guess this is kind of interesting to talk about. Let's talk about this. Let me look at the comments real quick. Uh, okay. What's up, K9? No deep carry? Yeah, I don't like deep carry clips. Um, I don't have to like put things like super covert. Um, I can carry what I want in whatever I want, so I prefer non-deep carry. Okay. Okay, what do you know about the Desert Fox from Fox Knives, and is it any good? Uh, so cutting it close, BZ Blades asked about the Desert Fox. I have a video on that knife. Um, I got one at Blade Show last year, so go back in my channel. You'll find a specific video for that knife. I liked it, but the pocket clip sucked, and so I never really carried it, and that was depressing because the knife was very, very cool. Uh, so Ed asked, what's a decent price to pay for an 0392? Um, the 0392s were 400, unless it was the Warncliffe version that had the steel flame tab, that was 450. So if you can find them anywhere near 400, that's a good price. Um, I think 425 up to 450 is still worth it. Above 450, that thing better be mint. So, um, you know, because this one is as close as can possibly be for 240. So, you know, it's really an aesthetic type of change between the 93 and the 92. And is that worth, you know, what is that, a premium of uh, of almost 200 bucks? Uh, maybe, maybe that's up to you guys, so. Okay, okay. So Mark says he does not see the Seiko craze. I mean, you, you gotta dive deep, Mark, don't do it. It's, it's very expensive, but I mean, Seiko makes stuff from five bucks to 10 grand, so um, they have some really, really good things in between. The JDM stuff, the Brassage line, the uh, you know the Alpes line, the Sarb lines, um, they have some some really incredible values in there. But you have to know what you're looking for. So, all right. Mm -hmm. So, what did you give your coworker as a loaner for this uh, this Benchmade? That's a good question. Let's talk about that real quick. 
Um, so, this is one of my coworkers' knives. Uh, well, this is his only knife, but, um, you know, people find out that I like knives. We get into talking about knives. Um, so, he carries this Benchmade Spike. Um, it is, I guess this one's a limited edition with the black and uh, serrated blade. Anyways, he his background was military and then police and then SWAT. Um, so apparently he broke the tip off this trying to do a breach into a house. He was down in uh, Texas, um, maybe Houston or something at the time. And they were going to arrest this guy who was involved in a drive-by shooting. So the... I guess his buddies out front were making a bunch of noise. He was supposed to like pop the window open and they were going to go in through the window. And so he stuck this down in the window jam and tried to go like this and just pop the tip right off. And this was a fairly weak tip. So he swore, pulled out a fixed blade, popped the window open and, and he went. But um, he's carried this thing, you know, for five years when he was on duty police and SWAT. And it's, you know, it's definitely seen some love, uh, which is cool. You know, uh, it's S30V. Um, it had lots of blade play, the action was super gritty, the edge was dull, the tip was broken off, and so I was like, man, I need to, I need to borrow, I'm gonna take that from you, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna sharpen it, we're gonna clean it up, and then I'll give it back to you. So the loaner that I gave him was the Wee Knives 617, I think. It's um, one of their D2 budget blades, it's a flipper. Um, it's a good knife, and I figured if he thrashed on it like he did this thing and it got damaged, I, I really wouldn't care. So that's the one that I gave him to borrow. So um, he still has it. He actually hasn't been into work for uh, like a week. Um, he just passed the test. And so I, I don't know if he's sick or something. But anyway, so this one has been um, sharpened. My friend Steven down at Blade HQ sharpened it. I cleaned it out. You know, I disassembled it, got all the grit out. And um, this one's actually quite temperamental. There's no washers on the inside, which is interesting. Um, so if I over tighten it, the blade just won't open. So there has to be a little bit of play in order for this thing to open properly. But it's, you know, it's way smoother now. And, you know, being not a knife guy, he does not care about blade play. So just kind of interesting. I know like five, you know, gun guys, guys who collect guns or buy guns. And, you know, they appreciate a good tool. And every one of them has some sort of Benchmade automatic um, all five of them do, and they're all beat to crap, and it's, you know, they've all carried them for anywhere from two to five years, and, you know, they're all going strong. I mean, this knife is perfectly usable, um, decent materials, you know, I think the handle's aluminum, but it's it's holding up pretty well. It's got a lot of abuse, though. So, anyways, it's just cool to see knives really get used and abused and loved, and it's it's really nice to clean them up and give them back. So, yeah. All right. Um... Let me look at the comments real quick. Okay. Um, so Ahmed asked, what's the difference between Citizens and Seikos? Uh, you know, I think Seiko has a much wider range. They certainly have a lot more automatics than Citizen does too. Um, uh, Citizen's okay. I mean, they've, they've got some great, you know, solar options and their eco drive and all that stuff. But if you're into automatic watches, I think Seiko is a better bet. Um, they just have a lot more automatics for a, a more reasonable price. Um, I do have a Citizen Signature Series that kind of looks like in, um, an AP Royal Oak. But that one's an eco drive. It's perpetual calendar. It is a huge pain in the ass to set. So, anyways... All right. Are you going to get the 046, the 462? Um, you already have a 462. Alpha already did a video on it. So this is the Benchmade Spike. This is the ZT0393. And this is the Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 21 Carbon Fiber Edition. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, Qualipair is saying the majority of autos don't have washers. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Oh, and Ryan asked, is the ZT0609 a limited run? Nope, that is full production, so they will keep making that until it stops selling. Okay. <laughs> Ricky was saying, saw someone on a forum say something along the lines of, Mass Drop is where existing designs go to die. Do you agree? 
You know, MassDrop is a cool platform for introducing new people to knives. You know, it's the interesting thing about MassDrop, the thing that I like about it is it is a community focused buy group. So you have you have like audiophiles, you have knife enthusiasts, you have watch enthusiasts, you have all these different enthusiasts, but we all have the same sickness in that we're all collectors. We all understand the value of sometimes more money equals higher quality. There's, you know, we hit a point of diminishing return. And so when you introduce enthusiasts to new hobbies, they quickly begin to understand the draw, they do their research, they dive into it. And before you know it, you know, they're buying things um, from other hobbies that aren't necessarily their own. So it's a site that's out to enable people. And so when you have these huge projects like the, you know, the, the Gent or something from MassDrop, it introduces people to a new hobby, which is great because the more people that we have in the knives, you know, the more protected our rights are, the more new cool products come out every year, you know, the more the companies push each other's prices down, um, you know, the more innovation that goes into the designs, like maybe the spring-loaded tab from ZT that they did with, uh, you know, GTC knives. So the more people in the hobby, the better off we all are. It really grinds my gears when people try to make their hobbies like, hey, I'm really unique or I'm really cool because it's like a niche hobby. No one knows what it is. And you see this crap on the forums all the time. And it's just like, I don't know, it irritates me because they're so short-sighted. They really don't see the big picture. Um, and if it was something like audio stuff, whatever, no one's going to make that illegal. But, you know, we're constantly potentially at risk for losing our rights to carry pocket knives. And in some states or cities, you know, they've, they've passed stupid legislation. So, you know, again, that's what I kind of like about MassDrop. If designs go to there to die, cool. As long as it introduces new people to the hobby, there will always be new designs. I could care less. So, and if it's a really good design, then it deserves to be in the hands of a lot of people for a really decent price. So, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, my thoughts on MassDrop as a whole. Uh, Jordan asks if I have any hinders. I have never owned any hinder. I borrowed one from Blade HQ. And, yep. Okay. Oh, uh, Soul Mame asks if I tried the Skaha yet. No, I, I, you know, I understand that it's like a great value, but I, I just think it is a very ugly design. So, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't be buying one. Um, so, Matt asks, do you still have the mass drop? that Mill is doing. Um, Matt, I'm honestly ashamed to say that I was supposed to ship it back like three weeks ago. And I went to go ship the other day. And then I realized that I was out of like small boxes. And so I still have it, which is kind of a dick move. Um, so my bad, Jonas. Um, yet yeah, I still have this thing in hand though. So yep. Well, it's not, in, it's in hand now. It's sitting next to me, I guess. Um, so Servo Zero. Do you ever get into more classic watches such as older Casio models? No, I don't, but I do like them. I just, you know, there's only so much time. Ooh, Michael Goodwill, Goodell asked, Chris Reeves, small subends or guarding tactical mini helix titanium? <sighs> totally different worlds, totally different worlds. So, you know, one is, you know, a very, uh, Futuristic looking design, a uh, great build quality American made. The other is just kind of a classic. Um, you know, I I have both. So, well, actually, I don't have a small Sabenza because I have a large Sabenza and I like nicer, I like bigger knives. So, yeah. Um, yeah, both. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Ooh, thoughts on the Minitherium Rupture Ass. Looks cool. I would definitely like to try it. Um, see one out. Okay. Put that millet knife up for size. Um, okay. Why not? Uh, there we go. Hopefully that's a decent size comparison. Oh, and since I always have it out, the what the pair of twos right next to me as well. With the uh, Flytanium scales, so move them back a little bit more. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Mm -hmm. 
Sean asked to show me my Shiro. I don't have a Shiro, Sean. I think we already discussed this, and you were just trying to drag up old wounds. Damn, I thought you were going to bring out the Guardian Tactical Love that night. Well, Eric, why don't you just ask, man? I'm close enough to my knife box. Okay. There we go. All right. Happy? Should be. All right. So let's, we should probably get to that Blade HQ knife of the week. So Matt uh, actually picked it this last week. And Matt is the, or Matthew, I apologize. Matthew, he showed up in the ZT banter video because of his knowledge of ZT knives. And he is the video editor, right? Yes. Yeah, Matt is the video editor. So he picked the knife of the week for this week. So we will see what he picked in a second. Um, okay. Matthew wants to know if I've tried the Nitro V on this. I have not done, so this is a prototype. This is not mine to abuse. Um, so I haven't really done anything with this knife. But, you know, again, by all accounts, Nitro V is similar to AEBL. AEBL I've had in Gavco Customs. I've had in Jesse Jarrow's Customs. Um, good steel. And I really don't anticipate any problems with it. You know, again, steel is one of those things that people like to really get into heated debates about. But in reality, if, if people can carry a knife with VG10 and that's their daily carry knife, then Nitro V is going to be fine. It might require you to strop it more often or sharp it every, every so often. But if the trade-off is that you're getting a much higher corrosion resistance, then that's a better thing. Because again, the premise is for a knife like this, you're going to have people who are buying their first pocket knife. They may go five years and do zero maintenance to the knife whatsoever. And so if you can choose a steel that has a high corrosion resistance, um, you know, again, you're going to have people having less problems overall. You know, some guy in Florida buys his first knife and it's a D2 blade and he just goes along his merry way and the knife is rusted head to toe. And then he, you know, blames the company for crappy steel or something. You know, it's not the company's fault that you don't take care of your knives. You don't understand what the steel is. So, you know, again, when you're doing a big project like this, you have to compensate for the lowest denominator, right? Uh, for the dumbest person, the person who, maybe not dumb, just ignorant to what they're doing or why they're doing it. Um, so again, those are the considerations they have to keep in mind because if they did something like D2 and all of a sudden people are on the forums just bashing them that their knives are rusting or something and it's like, well, yeah, it's a freaking D2 blade. Are you taking care of it? Well, what does that mean? You know? So anyways, um, bum, ba -dum. all right. Matthew needs his own channel. Yes. Uh, Jake is here. Knife knife nuts, Jake. Jake, I love you. Your your swords, your swords. They excite me. Okay. Uh, I think most so powerful canine said, I think most people don't even even own a sharpener. Uh yeah, definitely. I mean you have to be pretty deep into the the knife hobby to go out and buy a sharpener and then you have to learn how to use the sharpener i mean if it's stones that's a learning curve even the fixed angle systems have a learning curve so um ooh, so ahmed asked a lamic or sabenza for my first 300 hundred dollar knife <sighs> they're both good um i think most people are going to say sabenza because it has better brand recognition but i think the olamic would be more exciting and has more personality so yeah all right, let's let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Let's get to the uh, knife of the week that Matthew threw in the Barney box. So uh, again, Jonas, if you see this, I'm so sorry. Um, I I definitely will try to get these shipped back this week. Um, my apologies. All right, you guys know what time it is. So. As always, we've got the Barney box here. I don't know what's inside it. I'm gonna stick my hand in and try to guess it. I did it, the only one I've done successfully was the the Shin or the, the Rockstead, whatever model that was. So, let's see. Uh -huh. What's up Barney's butt? That is a good question. All right, so they put it in a plastic bag. They're trying to thwart me yet again. All right, so it's in a plastic bag, which means I'm going to have to try to, like, open the plastic bag and stick my hand in to feel it without looking. Okay. 
Bag is open, step one complete. Oh, I'm gonna rip the bag, all right, whatever. Huh. Oh, uh, is it an integral? I feel, I'm feeling integrally. I like that, they know I like integrals. So they just got in a new integral this last week that looked interesting. Was it the Steedmon Shy Sky? This feels integrally. That's the that's the only new integral that caught my eye, and it was new to Blade HQ this last week. So someone tell me what the what the name of that model was. It's like Sky or Shy. It's it was a, I think it was a Steedmon. Anyways, all right. That is my. I don't even know if I have the brand right, but. It was like a rectangular, long rectangular, so let's see if that is what it is. Yes! Oh, I, this is what I was thinking. Is this the Steedmon? All right. Let me pull out the... Let me pull out this. And you guys are going to say that I looked. I know you are. I don't really care. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was the Shy. Damn, I'm good. I am freaking good. Oh, interesting. How much is this? 350 all right, so there's the model number, Blade HQ 80564. I love that they keep giving me integrals. They know what I like. And guys, it's it's really hard to flip since there's like a cut right on like where my finger bends, but we will, oh, thumb studs. Blade stops. Yeah, those are blade stops, those are not thumb studs. Oh, that hurts. But this, this is, this is kind of cool. All right, what do we got here? Okay. Yeah, see, I knew you guys were going to say I peaked. I did not freaking peek. But, whatevers. Okay. That's kind of cool. They put the name and the model number and the steel right on the spine. I like that. That's kind of classy. Keep the blade nice and clean. And, you know, then they had to put in more machining work to do it instead of just laser work. Like, that's... I like that. I think that's a nice feature. So. Oh, this thing flips pretty well. Oh, dude, my finger freaking hurts. I, I want to say the ergonomics are pretty good, but I'm like in a lot of pain when I like bend my finger and grip things right now. It's a nice blade though. Huh. So 350, I mean, I say, you know, to me, kind of the, the price for most integrals is right around the $400 mark. So 350, well, there was the, the Wii Knives 702. 703, it was 300. Um, does this one have arguably more machine work? Mm, I don't know, maybe. I like the pivot assembly, it's pretty intricate. In, ew, pretty in intricate. So, and then there's their, I guess that's an S kind of on the pivot. I like it though, I think. Kind of the Quaken style, what do you guys think? All right, so specs. Uh, blade length, four inches. CTS 204P, total length is nine. Handle length is five. 4.7 ounces. How's the balance? Mm, she's a little bit butt heavy. She's got a little bit, of, a little bit of weight here on the back end, so balance isn't exceptional. Where's the balance point? Yeah, it's right around there-ish. So instead of being here, where your first finger rests, it's kind of closer to back here. You got some 90 degree angles here on the front, towards the front of the blade, but up to where the thumb goes, it's been rounded. Took a chamfer and put a chamfer here, so. Anyways, I, I like it, it's smooth. It's got a nice action. It'd be a lot easier if I could use my index finger. Yeah, it's got a pretty nice action. Kind of like this one. Pocket clip is deep carry. Cutouts are interesting. Anyways, I better look at the comments before you guys lose it. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. Uh, metals for brunch. I don't really have any thoughts on any of the steel wheel stuff. I haven't tried any of it yet. Looks okay. Um, I would consider the Escaton, but I wouldn't carry it every day. Huh. So Duro Sig 556R is saying the 
Steve Monshai has been around for a while. They've been sitting on Knife Center forever. Oh, I think those ones were aluminum, and I think this one's titanium. I think I know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Bob P. was making comments about being Jennifer's mother, and Jennifer's the original owner of said Barney Lunchbox. I don't know why you guys don't like the branding on the spine. I prefer it to the branding on the blade, really. Maybe the font could have been like a little more like hard lines, less rounded to give it a more professional look, like kind of like that, you know? Maybe the, you know, it's just maybe too bubbly. Is that, can you describe font as bubbly? I don't know. I don't mind it though. Again, it's, you know, when you're taking your nice Instagram pictures, voila. You don't see any branding and the blade's nice and clean on both sides, so yeah. I have no qualms with it on the spine. Yeah, this is a cool piece though. And then the, you know, knives like this, they just carry really well with the, kind of that long, slender, quaken style here. Pocket clip has got plenty of space, so you know, nice ramp going into the pocket. No, stop doing updates, computer. All right, let's see. Uh, okay. Powerful Canine said he thinks he'd get an Anthem over that. I mean, I, I really like the Anthem too. Yeah, Soul Man just commenting on the font as well. Uh, Ricky Roja is saying that people need to stop with the fake MSRPs or they just inflate the price like crazy. Okay. Matthew is saying that no one's gonna buy this for 350. I don't know, man. It's it seems like it's well made. You know, I don't know what the warranty support is like with Steedmon at all, but the fit and finish is good. So, you know, Steedmon and Rike, I think they're the same company, right? Because I'm pretty sure that yeah, Rike Knives has a very similar like pivot layout and stuff. So, either the same place for manufacturing, the same company. And so there's Steedmon, there's another company too that's like a, I don't even remember. There's a bunch of interconnected companies. I think they're all part of Reich. Um, but, you know, this is cheaper than, you know, I don't know, probably the similar Reich designs. I think those are like 400-ish. So let's move that out of the way. Put that down. Okay, so everyone is very unhappy about the font. <laughs> Um, on this knife. So these these are blade stops. These aren't thumb studs. No, I can't I can't force it out. It's got a pretty stout detent. So this is a flipper only, but I do like the geometry on the flipper tab here. Like this 45 with jimping is like perfect. Another knife that did that really, really well is probably the uh, Spyderco Rubicon was one of my favorite, you know, flipper tab shapes, if that's weird to say. And then it comes up ahead of the pivot, so you get pretty good, you know, flipping action. If my finger was more functional, this would look a lot less strained, so. Yeah. But it flips really well. Yeah, I can flip it with just about any finger. And it still needs to break in a little bit. I can still feel a little bit of resistance here on the bearing, so. But it's smooth. It'll get smoother though. You can just tell. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It'll smooth out for sure. All right. Um, so isn't Ryuki, so Eric was asking, isn't Rake or whatever done by Wii or is it Rake? No, Rake is done by Phoenix Flashlights. They're the same company. Wii is separate, Rake is separate. Um, so those are all three different manufacturers as far as I understand. Ooh, okay, so Bob is saying this shy comes in four different colors. Black, light, blue, silver slash gray, and green. So, yeah. All right, hopefully I didn't miss any other good comments here. Ooh, any particular reason why you like integrals? Um, that I can qualify in a meaningful way? I'm not sure. It's just, I just think it's a really interesting way to build a knife. Um, 
I'm not going to say that they're any stronger, but I think that they probably are. It's just, it's a more difficult way to manufacture and like the precision really has to be there. Like if you guys remember when uh, Spyderco came out with the Nirvana, their manufacturing partner, Tai Chung, really, really struggled with that knife because it was a different process and it was more difficult. And so they had to learn pretty fast and pretty hard what it takes to make an integral folder. Um, so to do it and to do it well is a more difficult process. You know, it's it's just cool being one solid piece. I don't know. It, I just I just kind of dig it. I dig the fact that it's more difficult. I dig the fact that they have to use more access to you know build it on a CNC machine. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting. I just floats my boat. Um, and I have a I mean I have a fairly good number of integrals in my collection and. Um, some other really exciting ones that are coming out are going to be, of course, the Spyderco Python that's going to be very overpriced, and then the Custom Knife Factory Satori, so I'm definitely looking forward to those. Riot just showed a new integral that they made um, at IWA in Germany that you can see on their Instagram channel, or Instagram feed, that looks really good. Um, so I, there's going to be more integrals coming out this year than I think in all pre previous years, so that's kind of cool. All right, um, what are some of the comments? Are there any other integrals at this price? Shotgun Bowen asks, uh, some by we, and we just debuted a, a new integral as well that looks really nice. It's got a lot of like rounding and what I assume is handwork in it. Um, that one looks really cool. Uh, so yeah, Koala Pear saying that we integral is like 350 or 300, one of them is. Um, Oh, okay, so Duro is saying that Knife Center has a plain old titanium shite non-flipper. So I think the fact that they've added a flipper tab is maybe new for the for the shy flipper. Um, Anna works nice, though. It's a, it's a nice green. There's hints of purple and gold in here. And these aren't flat planes. These are actually kind of like rounded. You know, there's a slight curvature to them. And to this right here and to this right here. Um, so nice animal work and nice machining overall. Like the pivot, that's obviously captured, right? And then they inserted, you know, the pivot and the bearing through this side, and it's adhered with the screw here, which then acts as an over travel stop for the frame lock, which also has a stainless steel lock insert. Lanyard holes nicely done. So yeah, you know, again, I mean, the the chamfering in here, it's really easy to disengage. It's really smooth and it flips really well. I think the only objectionable thing is pretty much like the font they chose on the spine. I would forgive it because I like all the other stuff about it, but some of you guys, you know, again, 350 is not cheap. Maybe you wouldn't forgive it. Um, and then 204P is a good blade steel. It, it's cool to see kind of some of these more abstract manufacturers like using like the highest quality steel available. Um, you know, and again, for 350, it's, it's pretty cool, so. Okay. Integrals, <laughs> Bob was saying integrals reverberate when they snap open. It's a manly man thing. Um, I hope so, yeah. Okay, let's see. Thoughts on the Wii Zeta? Uh, Panic in Skywalker asked. I liked it, it's a great design. Uh, flipper tab isn't the most comfortable, but everything else I think is really well executed. Okay. So Blitz BBFFL was saying with integrals you just don't get centering issues. That is true for the most part, although some of the Benchmade anthems I know went out there with centering issues. Thankfully mine was perfect, uh, which I you know I'm really happy about. So Duro says he's not a stickler for centering. Um, I am definitely a, a stickler for centering because I have yet to meet a knife maker who has designed a knife to not be centered. So if they design the knife to be centered and then the execution is such that it's not centered, that means they failed in the execution or the build of the knife. So that's my issue with centering. And if it has to be assembled a certain way to actually get it centered, then kind of we have an issue with tolerances. And again, that's just my opinion. So um, if you don't have an issue with centering by and large, I think you'll be a lot happier in life. Me, you know, I get miserable from time to time because of centering issues, so. Um, okay. Okay, so Dave Misanthropia, the, so I think we've got 50% of the knife nuts in here. 
uh, said Steedman is doing a pass round on Blade Forms, managed to get in on it, but I literally haven't heard anything about it. That's a bummer. Uh, Jordan asks, how many Chris Reeves? Uh, I just have one. You know, again, I, I mostly bought it for a size comparison. Does that sound weird? For you guys, I mean, I like it. It's really well executed, and you know, the carbon fiber version is my favorite of all the versions. But you know, I'm not like super hung up on Chris Reeve. Now, if they make a Manandi with a 3.25 inch blade, sweet baby Jesus, yes, please. Okay. Ooh, so Bob was saying that the Wii 702 is $295 on Blade HQ. So if you want an integral, um, the Wii 702 is really well made. It's definitely a little bit thick behind the edge. This one is, um, you know, this one's definitely a slicer. It's got actually some, you know, blade stock is very reasonable. comes down to a nice thin edge. So, I mean, this one's definitely going to be a better slicer than Wii 702. But if you want to get an integral, you just can't beat the value on the Wii 702. So... Um, Hotspots. In my extra large hand, I better, let me go to the non-injured hand so we can get a better grip on it. No, no hotspots in my hand. So, yeah, feels good in the hand. I will say that the 90 degree angles kind of on the edges up here, they look super clean. I mean, if you were to really choke up, that may not be the most comfortable, but if your thumb's just back here on the, you know, the, the part with the chamfering, I think that's fairly comfortable. So you guys can see that. Came in and put a slight chamfer here, but here it's a 90 degree angle. So I guess that's a consideration. Um, okay, I don't think Epic Snuggle Bunny has ever met has ever met USA from TAC Force fame? I, I don't know what that means, Nightmare, but I, I know that TAC Force makes some junky knives, right? Um, yeah. Mm, Dura was saying the Chinese always seem to dick up a design unless they collaborate with someone. Um... I don't know. I, that would take a lot more research. Okay. Uh, what if Chris Reed made an integral? Ooh. Ooh. Getting a little warm and fuzzy thinking about it. Okay. Oh yeah, Blitz was saying that uh, there are also some integrals from Lion Steel. Um, those are also fairly thick behind the edge and they're convex ground. Uh, but some of the aluminum versions can be had for like 200. Although to be honest, I would probably take a Wii integral over a Lion Steel aluminum integral. That's just personal preference though. So uh, Steve was asking about the Band-Aid and yeah, that was from a, a nylon leash that ripped the skin right off my hand. So um Hard Rock wants to know how many knives I have in my collection. Right now, it's more than 90. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. I know there were questions on Instagram. Let's go to questions. Instagram. Question, question, questions. I don't know if you guys saw what I posted. I was going to do a live stream. So, questions. Um. So... Future Rust and Dust wants to know if I have an opinion on Medfair knives, and so what is it? Uh, they have not made a design that I have liked yet. Um, they need to, you know, like, I mean, let, let's get a little contouring in. I mean, all their knives are shaped like squares or rectangles. Um, let's, you know, that our hands are not, you know, we do not thrive on 90 degree angles. So let's let's contour, let's chamfer, let's round some things. And then maybe I will pick up an integral. I, I think the owner is a, a little bit crazy. <laughs> Some of the stuff he said concerns me, but I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Sean, the Irishman, asks list of overrated list of overrates blades. You mean overrated knives? Overrated companies? Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I think that if, if a knife, if a production company was overrated, they probably wouldn't be in business for very long. Um, so if, if a company is able to sell knives and stay in business, are they really overrated or they're just some people who don't like them? I mean, that's really what the question is. I think there's certainly some custom knives or knife makers that are overrated. I mean, if you have a titanium frame lock that's going for like over five grand and there are other people who have the same quality, then, I mean, that's definitely overrated. So, yeah. Um, okay. That's it for the questions. What other questions do you guys have? Whoa. Um, oh, so Nightmarex clarified that, I guess when Nick Shabazz reviews Attack Force, he refers to the designer as USA. USA. Since the blade design says designed in the USA. Yeah. So favorite blade shape or thickness for your EDC? Um, I don't necessarily have a favorite blade thickness, favorite blade shape. Uh, I mean, I like shapes and sizes of all kinds of knives, you know, like big ones, thin ones, small ones, large ones. I mean, everyone needs loving, right? Cutting it close wants to know what my most prized knife is right now. Uh, I mean, either my ZT999 or I have a custom made by my friend Sam Johnston that is a very cool piece. Um, maybe one of those two, potentially. I mean, they're those two are arguably the most valuable out of everything in my collection right now, so... <laughs> Dave wants to know, Austin, was that a goddamn beautiful widgets widget on your home screen? I don't know what a widget's widget is. Dave, you'll have to clarify. Uh, Tim wants to know if I ever handled a sleesh buoy. I think I did briefly. I liked it. Um, but then they discontinued them, and I, I just never got around to picking one up. What knives do you think every self-respecting knife collector should own? I, whatever makes you happy. Um, I have, you know, again, it's if you're going to... Go out and collect $500 Chris Reeves, awesome. If you're going to collect $20 Kershaw's, awesome. If you're going to collect Schrade knives, cool. I mean, as long as it makes you happy. Um, you know, I I mean, hopefully at some point you, you get a knife in kind of the, you know, more than $100 range and you can kind of see what the quality is like at that level, but certainly not required to enjoy anything, so. Uh, Mtex, lol. All right. I'm being an Android nerd over here on our home screen. You had a clock on it similar to this one that was super popular. Uh, oh, my widget on my phone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is a widget. I don't even remember which one it is. I just keep upload or I don't know. I just keep using it every time I go to a new phone. So I guess that is a widget. And yes, I'm an Android nerd and Dave, I'm not surprised that you caught that. That's just kind of, that's you, so good catch. Ooh, Rapture wants to know, what company you think will blow our mind at Blade Show? Um, if Chris Reeve releases a new knife at Blade Show this year, I think people will lose their shiz over that. And, you know, there are rumors of rumors of new models coming from Chris Reeve, so when and if and how, I guess we will see. All right. Uh, Colin wants to know my number one grail. Honestly, I, I don't have really anything specific as far as a grail goes. Um, it, it changes all the time. It's just kind of, you know, what do I want? So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. If, if, it's, if, it's that, if it's a grail, that means it's going to be like a $5,000 knife. I mean, maybe a Stan Wilson on flipper flipper, and I'm not in a position where I'm buying $5,000 knives. So, uh, Ahmed wants to know if I have any Italian knives in my collection. I have a lion steel, and I think I've got something else. What else do I have? Uh, oh, I've got two lion steels. I've got the slip joint and then the uh, SR11. So, 
All right, so Dylan says, you mentioned you don't like mid-techs. What are your thoughts on the new Beg Mini Glimpse? Well, the new Beg Mini Glimpse is not a mid-tech. It's a very nice production knife. Um, it, I handled one at Blade HQ, and it was actually really well done. What was interesting, though, it's made by Riot, but it doesn't have a stainless steel lock insert. They carburize the edge like Chris Reeve does on their knives. So, you know, there's no stick or anything, but it's just interesting to see a Riot without a stainless steel lock insert. I, I thought that was kind of odd. So, um, but yeah, it was well done, but yeah, it's definitely not a mid-tech. So, um, what are your thoughts on the West Coast Blade Show, bud? Eric asks, oh, Eric. So Eric is a custom knife maker, and I don't know, Eric, it seems like there are a lot of blade shows, or there are a lot of knife shows coming out this year, some new ones, and, you know, the question is, can makers really produce for all these different shows, or, you know, are they neglecting their order books and the people have been waiting forever? Um, you know, it's it's just kind of a weird balance, but I don't really know that we need a lot of new shows, so... Yeah, Dave mentioned that the uh, the Kendrick Mosier collaboration that they did with Riot did also did not have a stainless steel lock insert, um, and you know I'm assuming that was at the request of Kendrick and Mosier. So, so Bob said I thought the glimpse were made by We. Um, so Bob, some of them are made by We, and some are made by Riot. So anything that is a thus far is a titanium frame lock is made by Riot. Anything that's like the G10 or carbon fiber is going to be made by We, And so, you know, the more expensive full titanium stuff, Riot, the less expensive carbon fiber G10 stuff by We knives. So that's how they're differentiating. They're using both manufacturers and they're going to continue to use both manufacturers going forward. All right. So Ricky, satin versus B-blast versus stonewash versus coatings versus orange peel. Um, are we talking blades or handles? Blades... Give me a stone wash so I can use it without worry. Satin is my next choice. I do not like bead blast on anything because it scratches like nobody's business. And yes, hey Mark. Let's see. So I think uh, Cody asked if I ordered a VDK goat. I don't know about the goat, but I mean, I've got the wasp here. This is a prototype that uh, Vlad let me borrow. So this is the VDK Wasp. Um, it's the handle of the War Admiral with kind of the blade of the Pioneer of the Nile. Um, she thick though, I mean this is 0.6 inches thick so it's definitely a thicker handle. And there's the pocket clip. I like the diamond texturing, it's pretty cool. Oh, man, my finger freaking hurts. So yeah, it's, it's definitely kind of a thicker knife. Um, you get a full size in it. If you have smaller hands, it might be, you know, a little, little small for you. So, or a little big for you, I'm sorry. So Mark was saying this reminds me of the ZT220? Yeah, I think so. Oh, the GOAT is the G10 D2 budget model he's producing with Wii. Um, yes, I have not handled one. It looks nice, though. All right, so Dave is commenting about the the knife shows and or the new knife shows popping up. So ninety percent of makers have such insane backlogs that more shows seems like a terrible idea. Um, Jacob from Poltergeist Works has taken orders again, and he hasn't finished orders from twenty sixteen and before. So, yeah, I mean, again, uh, with knife shows, the only thing that draws people is you know if if it's a custom knife show is. Are the makers bringing knives? Do I have a chance to buy one at table price instead of like an inflated secondary market price? And if they can only bring like one or two knives to the show, it's kind of like, what's the point? You know, um, a lot of these shows have minimums, but they don't actually enforce it when the knife makers show up. And, you know, if knife makers don't show up and you go to the show and the show's empty, then everyone's pissed. So it's, it's a really odd balance, but knife makers can only produce so many knives per month or per week or per year. And between custom orders, knife shows, uh, you know, auctions or one-off builds, um, you know, a lot of people are just kind of standing around waiting for, you know, for their shot. So, um, you know, I, you know, if you're, if someone's organizing a show, more power to them. It really depends on who they can get to show up that will draw in the actual people. I think, you know, the venue should, should play a big, 
you know, a big part like the, um, you know, I really like uh, the USN show in Vegas, but I mean the, what is it, the Hard Rock Hotel or, I can't remember which hotel it is, it's in, but it's kind of junky. And I hate the fact that everyone is smoking everywhere. It's pretty gross. So I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, um, what other questions do you guys have? We're, we're going on an hour here. And the Blade HQ knife, again, just to bring that back, is the Steedmon Shy. This is the green with the integral, with the text that apparently makes people angry. So, ooh, it's nice. It's really nice, actually. It's got a nice slicey blade, just like the new uh, ZT, is it uh, 462, that I really, really like. So... Who's your favorite OEM in the US? Not necessarily brand, just particular factory. I don't know. I don't know all of the OEMs. There are a few that um, I probably had knives by, but I didn't know it was them. So, you know, the problem is with a lot of the OEMs is that they, they're they under contractual obligation for non-disclosure agreements. And so even if they make an amazing knife and they kill it and the fit and finish is good, um, you know, they can't come out and say that they made the knife for fear of, you know, getting sued essentially. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone can save their worry for things that matter. Okay. Angry on text. Too much text. Liquor or beer? Um, I don't drink at all. In fact, I'm supposed to be sipping on this thing tonight. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to decrease my caffeine, guys, because I was going through like 600 milligrams a day, and I, I think it was just getting a little excessive, so I'm, I'm toning back on the caffeine. Join us on Facebook. God, that's my other thing, dude. There's so many groups on Facebook, and there's so much drama, and there's so many things that happen on Facebook. It is, I just, I hate Facebook. It's so hard to keep up with everything. Um, but then I know there's some good groups, and there's some good communities. It's just, there's so many of them, it's hard to keep track. So, anyways. Um, don't have any new ballast songs. Nope, just the crappy the one I got back in high school that, you know, came from Chinatown in LA. So, um, anyways, I, th I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Again, here's that little Benchmade spike that I'll get back to my coworker this next week. But yeah, five going five years strong. That that um, spring is really nice. This, I mean, this thing is still in just perfect working order, especially after a little tune up and sharpening. Uh, that my buddy Steven at Blade HQ did. So he reprofiled the tip that broke off and gave it a, a screaming sharp edge here. Um, interesting thing too is that my, you know, my coworker, whatever, when he was, you know, uh, police and SWAT, um, he never actually used the serrations at all because these things are still just like sharp, factory sharp. And I said, well, those are still in pretty good shape. He's like, oh yeah, I've, I never used the serrations. And yeah, I agree with that 100%. I have not... When was the last time? The last time I bought a knife with serrations was in, I was in, which city was I in? It was in Italy. It was when I lived in Italy. And I bought a knife that looks like a CRK TM-16 with serrations. Ah, oh, was it, it was, Vicenza? Might have been Vicenza. I found like a knife shop and I didn't know anything about knives then, but I bought that little M16 looking knife with it had serrations and that was in 2006. So the last knife I bought with serrations was in 2006. And so in the last 12 years, I have not bought one knife with serrations because to me, they're pointless for, you know, what I need. So anyways, it's kind of a fun aside. All right. Um... What is up? Yeah, the reground tip does look really good. Almost looks like a you know a reverse Tonto, like on the 940, uh, which is cool. You know that that really pointy tip that gave this knife the name, the Spike, really wasn't digging it. So um, I think this is actually an improvement, um, just like uh, uh, Colin mentioned. So, ooh, Tom asked or Mark asked, my favorite South African maker. Well, there's really no way, better way to demonstrate that than to pull out, you know, I have three South African knives. They're all, well, they're all custom, but I guess there aren't any production South Africans aside from 
arguably Chris Reeve. Um, so, my favorite South African maker is Clyde Chalinor, which is why I have the large and the small of the same knife, which is excessive but wonderful. I'm really hoping at some point he makes an intermediate at like 3.5. That would be pretty cool, but I have had six different knives from Clyde Chalinor, and I've seen him at two shows where he brought like at least 10 knives each. So I've handled over 26 of his builds, and every single one was flawless. Just absolutely flawless, amazing fit and finish, amazing action, everyone was centered. Um, so I have nothing but good things to say about Clyde. He's a wonderful person, um, so talk to him if you go to a show. And then the only other South African that I have is this uh, Johan Ellis, where it says Johan Ellis, and this is called the Meganique. So the designer on all three of these is Francois Nell. Uh, he's on Instagram, and he did the designs for Clyde, and he did this design for Johan. And uh, this is named after Francois's two daughters, Megan, Meganique, Megan and Monique. And so it's the Meganique, and uh, it's a just a gorgeous slip joint. Uh, I only have one custom slip joint, and so I went balls to the wall with you know colored carbon fiber and damasteel steel and. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a beautiful knife. So, anyways, these are these are my favorite South African makers. I I really like Jason Guthrie's work. Uh, I had one of his knives, but I sold it because people were asking me like once a week to sell the knife, and so I needed to free up some cash. And so, if people are banging down your door for a knife, I mean, sometimes that's the one that goes. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shotgun Bowen, have you ever handled a sheepdog knife before? Um, a sheepdog, I mean, from the maker? Uh, I had friends who bought from him, and the quality was unfortunately very, very questionable. So, yes. Everyone's streaming. Uh, video games or me? I don't know. I'd probably be more interested in video games personally. Uh, Phillips, so I mean, if it's a good game, man, go watch that on Twitch. Okay. How crazy is that carbon? Okay. So Dylan said, I'm the one that messaged you about Clyde and Rockstead. The Clydes are so epic. Well, I think you I think you got an, an almost the same version as this one, Dylan. Uh hopefully it's it's in good order. Um you should look up some Enigma knives for unique slip joints. And maybe I will have to. Okay. Anyways, all right, I don't know, I guess we'll leave it there. Um, I guess you're winning out. I'm going to do action. Dude, if I'm winning out on video game streams, then I must be doing something right or very wrong because I like video games. All right. <laughs> start, swimming, start streaming on Twitch, Epic Snuggle Bunny. I'd watch that. Well, like video games, do people stream other things on Twitch? I don't know what the hell Twitch is, and I don't understand the appeal of Reddit, and I don't have time for Facebook, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other apps and things out there. Like, I'm only in my 30s, so when I'm like, I just don't get the point. I feel so damn old. So, I don't know. There's there's just so much to distract us, and I don't have so much time. So, yeah, people stream all things on Twitch now. Ugh, so, uh, I don't know if I have time. I have to look into it. I thought Twitch was only for video games, but apparently, like, I'm behind the times already. So, anyways. Uh, thoughts on Riot's Damas Steel finish? Uh, Knife Junkie asks, no. Riot does a really, really good deal, uh, a really, really good job with the Damas Steel. They treat it perfectly. So, I know, Nightmare's saying I sound like an old man now. Dude, I feel like an old man when I'm like, I don't get the point of X, Y, or Z. You know, like, again, someone explained Reddit to me, and I'm like, forums have been around forever. Like, what the hell's the point, right? Someone's going to have to, like, sit down and really convince me, like, what the value of Reddit is, because we have knife forums, so, like, what the freak is the point? I don't get it. Anyways, oh, Jesper Voxney does make awesome knives. Um, or a sharpening stream. Guys, sharpening takes patience. I do not have patience for sharpening. It would just be me swearing and probably jacking things up and maybe bleeding, and then there'd be crying. No one wants to watch me sharpen knives, so. Stream your jizzle chop. 
Dave, just just for you, man. I'll, I'll send. You, we'll we'll chat. We'll chat. Mm. Okay. All right, guys. We'll end it there. I, again, I appreciate all you guys tuning in. Um, thanks again, Blade HQ for and Matthew specifically, the video editor extraordinaire, Blade HQ, who inserts all those fun things for giving me another integral to stare at and play with for a little bit. I probably shouldn't carry this knife because one of you guys is good, probably going to end up buying it someday or someone's going to buy it, but I really want to carry it. I really want to carry it, but then I don't want to buy it, but then I do want to buy it. So this is all, this is a Blade HQ letting me borrow knives. It's a, it's a sophisticated mousetrap. That's what it is. And then if you guys want to check this out, again, the model number is right there and there's the website and all that good stuff. So anyways, thanks again, guys. Have a good night. Um, more videos to come. I need to get my crap together after this final this week and I'll have a little bit more time for some more videos. So anyways, see ya.